Join Iowa Gospel Festival and G-Fest as we proudly present Richard Smallwood, June 14th, with special guest Earl Bynum, live in concert with a 50-person orchestra and 100-person choir at Grace United Methodist 3700 Cottage Grove. That's right, Richard Smallwood and special guest Earl Bynum, live in concert to open up Juneteenth festivities here in Des Moines, Iowa. Get your tickets at www.eventbrite.com. That's Richard Smallwood, June 14th, with a 50-person orchestra and 100-person choir at Grace United Methodist, 3700 Cottage Grove in Des Moines. G-Fest and Iowa Gospel Festival can be found at Facebook. That's G-Fest with Richard Smallwood and Earl Bynum, June 14th at Grace United Methodist Church, 3700 Cottage Grove. That's Richard Smallwood live in concert www.eventbrite.com Sponsored by G-Fest Welcome, welcome. This is Reich Plekis with a view from the pew and also 99.3 KTIA FM here in Des Moines. I tell you, it, that video with Richard Smallwood is just a delight, total praise and also anthem of praise. I want you to, you know, please let that minister to your heart, uh, grab your soul. He's going to be here ministering live in concert and I think also with an orchestra and like a hundred person choir on June 14th, put on by the Iowa Gospel Festival at Grace United Methodist Church, 3700 Cottage Grove. You can get tickets at www.eventbrite.com. That's www.eventbrite.com and also at the door. You want to get them online because it's going to save you about 10 or $15. I have a special guest with me in the studio today. This is a, a sister from another mother. And this lady, she will laugh with me. She will cry with me. She will hold me accountable. She will lift me up when I'm down. But I, most of all, she just, you know, brightens my day. I, I, we can sing together and she just brings joy to my heart. And I want to welcome, I call her Mayor's First Lady, Sally Kickbush Gare. How are you today? I'm fine, Mike. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank good. you so much for coming on. Um, I tell you, you are a delight. And you and I have really, only, we've known each other a long time, but we've really only been acquainted like maybe the last five years. Probably, yeah. Something like that. Mm -hmm. We've. Uh, I've only been really crazy with you for the last five years. <laughs> Is that true? True. true. And, and we share similarities in gospel music. Mm -hmm. uh, we serve the same Lord, a risen Savior. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Um, but there's something special that's dear to your heart, and, then, and I've kind of adopted, and that is your daughter, Miss Margaret. Mm -hmm. And um, we're not going to cry here today. So, But um, I, if you can... Just share share a little bit about your biography. You you went to school. You went to college to be a CPA, correct? Yes, yes. Got a degree in accounting. Passed all the CPA exams. I sat passed it all. So I never got my license because I never worked for a public accounting firm. But I worked at Meredith. Mm -hmm. And God said we're going to do something different with you. Mm -hmm. And He's blessed you to be a twenty four seven housewife, mother, mm -hmm. vacationer. <laughs> and worshiper. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, you have two children, a mother of two, mm -hmm. a mother of four, because you have you have puppies. You have dogs. Two dogs. Yeah. Two dogs as well. Two trained service dogs. Um, your husband is the mayor, Steve Gare, from West Des Moines. Mm -hmm. How many terms has he served now? Uh, he was three on the city council, um, one and a half mayor, because he did intern um interim term when Gene Meyer went up to serve under Governor Culver. So he is up for re-election in November. I just got a mailing in regards to that, in fact. <laughs> so please support support our politicians. Pray for them. Mm -hmm. Give them financial assistance. Um, and and pray for them. Whether, whether they're Democratic or Republican, pray for them. We need we need their their help, their guidance. You know, they're making our community, the community in which we live in, a safe place, making our schools better. Amen. Hallelujah. Yep. Pray for their families, too. Their families, too. And that's why I wanted to have you on today as a guest. Um, uh, your sister and I, we were crazy. We used to <laughs> we used to karaoke in the van at Christmas time and clang, clang, clang with the trolley and sing Christmas carols on, on, on school breaks and such. But um, somebody that's become dear to my heart is actually uh, your daughter. I know your son, but really your daughter. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your daughter. Margaret is 23, functions at about a four to five-year-old level. 
Um, she is on three anti-seizure meds, has a vagus nerve stimulator, and she still has seizures at least once a week. Once a week. Mm-hmm. And at are these least. like, now, you know, I'm pretty stupid when it comes to these, they call grand mal seizures. She or? has a lot of different kinds, but she can have grand mal. She can have complex partial. She can have absence. She can, there's many kinds of seizures, myoclonics. She can have a lot of different kinds of seizures. And is there, is there any reason because of this? I mean, a lot of people could sit back and I'll just, you know, me, an ace and ace, a spade, a spade. I could sit back in misery and say, God, why me? Mm-hmm. If I was to have something like that. I mean, I deal with weight issues. I, I dealt with being pigeon toed my whole entire life. Yes. I had a 45 degree turn in and had to wear leg braces till I was in high school and but me, but I mean, <laughs> um, do you ever sit back and wonder, God, why me? Mm-hmm. And yeah. and how have you how have you made? I just have to say it. How have you made it through? How do you operate day to day? Have you always? I, I didn't grow up in church, Sally, and you know this. I've said this before. You know, um, have you grown up in church your entire life? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was raised in the strictest of Lutheran churches. Um, accepted the Lord and Confirmation class. Um, were you a religion person or did you have a relationship as a youngster? Um, I probably had a relationship, but was not truly saved until confirmation when I really got the grace message that it wasn't about me, that it was about him and what he would do for me. And that's how I'm going to heaven. My faith in what Jesus did on the cross. So when, so when did, would you say it truly sank into you? When I was... In confirmation class. So that's 13, like... 13, 14. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, very active in um, fellowship of Christian athletes in college. And, um, you know, just went on thinking I was going to have this whatever life. And then when our daughter had her first seizure, four hours after her second DPT shot, and that seizure lasted over an hour, our life changed forever. So... Do you think that this was something that was sparked... Um, by medical science, do you think? I truly believe seeing it. I think it's a vaccination injury. Okay. Yeah. Um, she she had a seizure that lasted over an hour. Um, then started having more seizures. Um, took 17 years to diagnose her with a syndrome called Dravet syndrome, D-R-A-V-E-T. Um, but during those 17 years, we tried nearly every medication had the vagus nerve stimulator implanted. Some of the medications we tried were um, contraindicated, which made her seizures worse, but it was trial and error. So we're just blessed now to have a diagnosis to know what medications not to try, but she'll never, she'll never get better. But God, but God till she's healed completely in heaven. Mm -hmm. Um, I tell you, it's it's got to be like the patience of Job that's been put upon, upon you because I I don't think that I truly could function in that capacity. And you are such a, a well spirited individual. I I don't see much move you. I mean, <laughs> if it was me, I could trip out to the holy of holies or the worldly of worldlies. Let me tell you. I mean, you know me. Well, there's so. an. I mean, you know, through the years, God takes you through what He takes you through and makes it hard, and you sit at His feet. I mean, you just beg him to take it away, and he doesn't, and he gives you the grace to to get through it. Um, He sends angels. There are times it's hard, and he'll throw something in there to say, I'm here. I've got this. I got your back. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember when my my daughter was um, young, and I want to keep this a a lighthearted conversation by all means, but I remember she was probably three or four years old at, at Cornerstone Family Church here in Des Moines, and we were in the midst of camp meeting and she looked in the sanctuary and she said, daddy, do you see that? There's angels on the ceiling. Mm. And, and you know me, I'm, we have some pretty high services sometimes. And <laughs> I said, I, I, I see it, Laura. I feel it. I feel it. And um, then another young child came out and said, do you see them floating? And these were kids that were back in children's church at the time. Maybe they were five. Mm. Um, do you think that Margaret has, insight of what God has 
here on earth? Because I, I know that when I sing to her, especially if I see her, she just lightens up. I mean, the joy of the Lord comes upon her. Sometimes she will tell me to hush up, you mm-hmm. know, but I mean, you do see her lighten up and the joy of the Lord comes upon her. Mm-hmm. So um, do you think that maybe she sees things that we normally don't see because we are so bound by the things of the world? Yeah. she When she was little, there was a little boy in her class. She was probably three or four, and he he literally was extremely disfigured. He had half of a face. He was missing an eye. And in my eye, it was hard for me to look on him. And she saw nothing but Jared. She saw nothing but a person, and she loved him. And I thought... True beauty. You know? Wow. Is there, um, is there one thing especially that you can you can recall back on that you know that Margaret may have sensed the Lord's presence in her life because she she has limited audibility. I mean, we can understand her. It, it's more difficult for me because I'm not around her as much as you, correct? Mm-hmm. But I mean, do you do you feel as though that she can be audible in regards to what she experiences quite a bit to you or mm, not really. Do you have to read off of body language? I, I, that's a hard question. I'm not really understanding okay. what you're trying to ask Well, me. sometimes a lot of people uh, wonder how people with special needs communicate. Mm-hmm. And um, so often people of ignorance, I'm just going to say that, are too quick to put a person on a back shelf, you know, would we help a person cross the street? Would we help them tie their shoes? So on and so forth. So in order for uh, Margaret to communicate with you easier, or has it just been, you know, growing up with her 23 years, you know her, you know her needs, you can assess them by her daily walk. Mm-hmm. So are you able to, you know, communicate that way with her just because you know her day in, day out, regimented and schedule? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything that stimulates her more so? She loves attention. She just bottom line loves attention. She goes to a Bible study at church, and she absolutely loves the the director. She loves attention. She did the Sound Reach Choir, and she loves the director of the Sound Reach Choir. She loves men. She loves attention. She she's we've always likened her to not to be mean, but to a dog. She has a very good sense of people, and she knows who likes her and who get her and who see her as a person and she knows people who are uncomfortable and if people are uncomfortable around her she won't have have any part of them sense yeah she won't have any part of them she loves music Mm -hmm. she loves music music. i i tell you i sang to her today Mm -hmm. on the phone and you could tell i could tell when she's smiling because she gets quiet Mm -hmm. and then she'll say something like right be quiet (laughs) you know and you just can't do anything but just smile with Mm -hmm. her you know Mm -hmm. and um i i I always sing the same song to her because I know that that's the one that makes her smile the most. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. <laughs> it's so easy, you know, and it's, it's such a redundant song, but it's so easy to sing, you know, and um, I tell you, the joy of the Lord just comes upon me. Uh, my guest today is uh, Sally Gear, and, and we're, we're talking about the patience of Job. We're talking about the trials and tribulations that, you know, come upon us and, and how we, how we work through them. And I tell you, this lady has been a blessing to my life. Um, she's held me accountable in some things and she's also shown me some things that I don't think that I could have made it through unless a third party came to me. And, um, I, I tell you, I, I've learned a lot of respect by just watching you and your husband. Um, as I said earlier, um, I didn't grow up in church, so, I'm not going to say I was ignorant to the ways because you make a choice to do right or to do wrong. And so um, you and your husband, you and, I'm going to say you and your family, you know, I, yeah, I love your mom. Your mom, <laughs> I'll tell you what. Oh, Joni. You're Joni. Mm-hmm. Um, just good people, but you don't get into heaven just by good works. We all know that. Right. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, I just love the simple fact that you you do great things for people. You would give the shirt off your back to do things. You stand for righteousness. Mm-hmm. And uh, the simple fact that God has given you a patience to endure, and um, I think we are so quick to to discount patience. Uh, we're going to go to a station break here. We're with Sally Gear and myself, Reich Plekis, at uh, www. The View from the View and ninety nine point three KTIA. We hope that you will rejoin us and call in if you have any questions for us. Okay, come back, tune in, turn on, turn it up. We'll be back right after this. Stay tuned. Do 
choose to obey the power of sin, it leads to death. If you choose to obey obedience, it leads to righteousness. Forgiveness is just the beginning of life in Christ. God wants us to live for him now. And because of Jesus Christ, the gospel was preached, and you and I are blessed today because of Abraham. Did you know that? We're blessed. Experience Truth, 99.3 FM. Yes, now your favorite programs on Webcast One Live can all be watched and listened to on any Android or Apple device. Your phone, tablet, or iPad. Yes, your favorite shows on Webcast One Live are available live or on podcast wherever you go. Let me introduce to you some of our great shows. I'm Michael Libby. I'm the host of Insight on Business, the News Hour. We're seen live at 8.45 each Monday morning at Webcast One Live or whenever you want on my blog or on the Internet. So what qualifies me to talk about advertising, marketing, and consumer trends? Well, it's my business. Inside Advertising, Marketing, and Communications has helped dozens of companies, small, medium, and large, learn how to use advertising correctly. And we pass that information on to you each and every week. Well, hi. Uh, my name is Mike Ahmed, and uh, I host the show Bridge the Gap Ministry. Our vision is, is to bridge the gap between cultures. And what we use, we use the Word of God. And uh, because His riches in that word and the wisdom is what brings us together. So we learn the word, we speak the word, and we practice the word on this show every Thursday. Don't miss it. I'm looking forward to seeing you. So when you want to watch your favorite Webcast One program, remember, there's an app for that. You know, there's an app for that. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Whether you're 10, 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond, everyone needs to live within their means. I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people of all ages learn to manage their personal finances to benefit them far into the future. When problems arise, we've got the experience you need to make those debt problems go away. Got financial problems? Call Consumer Credit of America. Join Iowa Gospel Festival and G-Fest as we proudly present Richard Smallwood, June 14th, with special guest Earl Bynum live in concert with a 50-person orchestra and 100-person choir at Grace United Methodist 3700 Cottage Grove. That's right, Richard Smallwood and special guest Earl Bynum live in concert to open up Juneteenth festivities here in Des Moines, Iowa on June 14th. Get your tickets at www.eventbrite.com. That's Richard Smallwood, June 14th, with a 50-person orchestra and 100 person choir at Grace United Methodist 3700 Cottage Grove in Des Moines. G-Fest and Iowa Gospel Festival can be found at Facebook. That's G-Fest with Richard Smallwood and Earl Bynum June 14th at Grace United Methodist Church 3700 Cottage Grove. That's Richard Smallwood live in concert. www.eventbrite.com Sponsored by G-Fest. We are back here at a WWW, The View from the Pew, and also 99.3 KTIA FM Radio. My name is Reich Plekis. I'm your host on Wednesdays and Thursdays at 3 p.m. And my guest in the studio today is none other than the Mayor's First Lady, Sally Kickbush Gare. And I tell you, we are talking about, and I mispronounce this every time, Dravet? Dravet. Dravet. <laughs> Must be French, huh? French. Dravet Syndrome. 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 <laughs> And the patience of Job, the patience that God's put upon you to um, be risen up and work with your daughter on a day-to-day basis um, through this walk of life. Um, the question I asked you during the break was, um, are there any exercises or any therapeutic exercises, um, types of relationships that can be built um, with um and I'm going to say people that have this syndrome. I'm not going to say youth because this evidently your daughter is a young adult now. Mm-hmm. Um, 
what what can they do to be more functioning um, in in day to day activities, sports or? Uh, um, she has to be really careful because of the seizures. So uh, physically wise, um, she she just can't overheat or get overexcited. She'll have more seizures. But one of her favorite things to do is called the Exceptional Rider Program at Jester Park. Um, and she goes out for an hour each week, and they have a mounting ramp, and she gets on a horse, and she does exercises. And then um, Deanne Munt runs the program, and she does an amazing job and has wonderful volunteers. So if anybody ever wants to volunteer to be a sidewalker for a special needs individual at the horse barn, um, she's always looking for sidewalkers. But... Um, then she'll do a different game. This last week, she had a list of, I'm not even sure what all it was, so different animals. And she kind of hides them throughout the arena. And then Margaret's to tell the horse to walk on or woe, and then ask the sidewalker to grab the animal for her. And she ends up taking them all back and marks them off the list. Sometimes she'll do a puzzle on the horse. Um, sometimes she'll get to do a trail ride outside, but she loves it she loves the attention the the volunteers are amazing so really there is a ministry outside the four walls of the church that people can volunteer oh yeah and when people say there's just not a ministry for me that i can't do there's something that mm -hmm. people may not even know about that they could do and that's mm -hmm. at jester park and what's it called again the exceptional rider program the exceptional rider program mm -hmm. okay um here's a, a thing that just popped up on the web um uh, a reader just posted this. Sometimes you'll be required to do things that are outside your comfort zone or your box. I'm willing to help people do things that are difficult. I'll show you the way to give you the wisdom necessary to accomplish all that's necessary, but you have to first start with saying, I will. Uh, put aside all the fears and dread and face your challenges with bold assurance that you are able to do what's required, says the Lord. And she quotes Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. She said, Reich, I'm glad you're talking about this topic today because so many times we do put ourselves in a box and say there's nothing for me to do in the mm -hmm. church. So right here is another ministry that, especially if you like horses and you like people, um, you know, here is a, a, an option that you can get into the exceptional riding program and assist um People probably of all ages. Yeah, she has little ones up to older adults on these horses. That's amazing. And I'm sure that they'd probably train you. Oh yeah, out she'll there. train. She'll train the volunteers. Yeah. Do the uh, does Margaret do anything with Easter seals or camps or? No, we took her to camp Sunnyside once or twice, but it wasn't a good fit for her. Um, she she really enjoys the Access Bible Study at Lutheran Church of Hope, which is for teens and young adults. And once a month, they play basketball, and we try to pull in people from the community to play basketball with um, these special needs individuals. And I'm amazed at how hard it is to get people to come and play basketball for one hour once a month. So, Do you think it's because they're intimidated because they they may feel as though they may injure that that special person. I, I just think people think their time is too precious. That's honest. I, That's you know, just being I honest. think their time is too precious. They're too busy running to soccer games or whatever they're doing. Um, I, you know, it's just like people in nursing homes to me. People with disabilities spend a lot of time alone. They have no friends, they have nobody to outreach, and it's hard for a lot of them to get out. They're like shut ins. You know, it's funny that you said that. Um, about two weeks ago, I put out a blog, blog on my Facebook page. Um, a woman that I've known for probably about 22, 23 years was put out of her home. Her husband threw all of her belongings out on the front, front yard and moved his new partner, new woman, into the household mm -hmm. and said that he had filed for divorce. I've paid for three months for an apartment for you and the kids. Mm -hmm. go make a way. The woman has never worked outside the home. And um, uh, so she said to me, um, uh, Reich, I don't know what to do. I have nothing. He left her with no furniture but a bed on the apartment floor for the kids and, and her to sleep on. And I put out the request to my friends on Facebook and on Twitter. And I tell you, I want to thank you people that stepped up to the plate 
you furnished a, an apartment for this woman. Mm. You gave her um, uh, gift cards for groceries. You gave her curtains. You gave her towels, bed linens, um, uh, sofa and love seat, coffee tables, end tables, lamps, TV. Um, everything was afforded. But it's like Sally said today, sometimes we just need to afford the, the most opportune thing, and that's just somebody to come alongside you. Mm -hmm. Time. That ministry of time. Time, talent, and treasure means a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we take for granted a lot of things that are just so minimal sometimes. Is there anything else that, um, that somebody else can do? Can, um, is Margaret able to swim? Can she go to programs like that? Um, We've taken her to the Y. She does like to swim, but it, it, it wears her out, and it's kind of a big event to get her going, get her in the pool, and then it's a bigger event to get her out and get her home. <laughs> so it's got to be her idea, that's for sure. She, it's just when you're disabled like she is, it's she's on her own timetable. You know, if it's not her idea, it's not going to happen. <laughs> okay. Well, if if uh, if that's how Margaret is now, we only would think of how she would be if she didn't have Dravet syndrome. <laughs> It'd be we know who wears the 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 le um. Levi's in the family there. <laughs> Um, any other exercises, um, uh, game board games. I know that, um, my daughter, I think my daughter came over one night a couple years back and did fingernail painting or something like that. Or well, they did that at the church that one night. Yeah. She loves to have her nails done. She loves to do puzzles. She likes to play go fish. Um, she's really good at hitting ball one arm with a bat. She loves to have somebody pitch to her. She likes to do that. The weather's been horrific for that, but. Yeah. Um, a, ro a reader just wrote, how about prayer and reflection? Does does Margaret have the ability to p sit down and pray and reflect with her parents? No. No? No. That's way beyond her intellectual capacity. Okay. Yeah. So the, see, some of the things that we take so for granted mm -hmm. are, are stripped away from us. Mm -hmm. um, if there was one thing that you could wish for, but it couldn't be total recovery, what would it be? Hmm. That's the hard one. Somebody just wrote this, so that's why I'm asking it. They say, the one thing I would wish for is that she'd never have another seizure. Praise God. Now, you have two service animals. <laughs> well, yeah, we have a retired service animal. She was... Our first service dog, we got um, two service animals in the hopes that they would alert us to Margaret seizures. The first one is a Beagle Lab, and um, she she's a joy. She's a little pistol, but she got a little protective. So when she was still at, at school, she growled at the counselor one day when he came in. So we had to remove her from service because you can't have a service dog growling okay. at anyone. <laughs> so nine months later we got uh monty the german shepherd and he is a docile sweet lovable dog and he loves his girl but he's not very good at seizure alert so when we brought him home i worked and worked him not that i hadn't worked emma also but um, i worked him a lot on seizure response and now emma barks at nearly every seizure monty may or may not bark his alert is more a jump off the bed but he jumps off the bed on other occasions too so you can't rely on that but anyway monty goes with her everywhere he's okay. a black german shepherd and he's a very cool dog and he's really pretty obedient except at the horse barn where he loves cats and goes crazy okay <laughs> his own ministry <laughs> so yeah Service animals are a lot of work and a lot of money and a challenge, but it's good for her to have a dog. He's also used for socialization, unlike um, sight dogs. Um, you can pet him. You can talk to him. The rule is, if you ever come upon someone with a service dog, may I pet your dog? They'll say yes or no. Don't ever just assume your child can pet a service animal. You always need to ask. Ask. Mm -hmm. And that, that should be that way with any dog or family pet well true yeah you know if if uh, pastor andre brooks had a rottweiler or a <laughs> I, I, king corso whatever that dog's called 
trust me, I'm going to ask, can I pet your dog before I, I pet this dog with a three inch chain around the, mm-hmm. that goes back to the, the, the trunk of the tree. Um, and an evangelist, and I don't, I cannot even begin to pronounce this last name, Chuck Waka, C-H-U-K-W-K-A-H. Um, Miss Sally, in all your getting and getting understanding of Proverbs 4 and 7, have you gotten an understanding of what's really happened in the 23, 24 years of your life with your daughter? Happened with me? Yeah. Has it brought you to, I'm just going to say, because I'm trying to read into this too. Has it brought you to a deeper understanding with Christ in your walk with a Dravet syndrome? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I really don't think I would be as near at the feet of the cross um, if I hadn't been through this and continue to go through it. You can't do, you can't live with someone who has seizures and needs and disabilities. You can't do it by yourself. If, if you don't have the Lord holding your hand and carrying you through I, you can't do it. I don't know how anybody would want to do it, but I don't know how they can. Well, and I think that's almost with anything, but probably more so in regards to this sense, because the simple fact that it's there's a communication barrier, there's a physical um, motability barrier. Mm-hmm. You know, you have so many different variables going on there. Um, has it been difficult in your church life? Has it been a, a, a strain to find a, a house of house of hope to reach out to her (laughs) hold that thought because we're going to be coming back in about 30 seconds after that I'm with Sally Gare today and we're just talking about how the spirit moves and has his being in our lives and talking about Dravet syndrome and how the patience of Job has come across her life my name is Reich Plekis with a view from the pew and 99.3 KTIA FM radio right here in Des Moines stay tuned tune in turn on turn it up we are live right here in central Iowa From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. I brought a long couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I'm administrative manager. I'm the senior technician. From Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, um, that we're gonna do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do, and if we guarantee it's gonna be a good experience for you, or else it's free. What type of work do you think we're going to do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee. All of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we'd fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you going to say that to a client? No. <laughs> You don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're gonna be listening. They're gonna wanna know what your challenges are. Then they're gonna come and give you options and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family. You know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now and then leave and then come back, charge you again. And and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed the day. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me. But is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did is perfect. It's great. <laughs> Keep going, though. I like this. <laughs> just give us a try. I'm going to take all the risks. 
I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do, I mean, fixed writer, it's free or 100% money back. Enough said. Welcome to The View from a Pew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM. I'm your host, Reich Plekis, each and every Wednesday and Thursday from here on out on The View from a Pew.com and KTIA at 3 p.m. Join me as I present the greatest gospel artists, small groups, musicians, pastors, authors, apostles, and more, bringing to you the clear and concise word of God locally. Join me, www.theviewfromapew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM at 3 p.m. I hope you'll join me to spread the word powered by GFest and Webcast One Live.com. We are back. My name is Reich Plekus here at The View from the Pew. We are live and also uh, 99.3 KTA, KTIA 99.3 FM radio. Uh, in the studio with me today is the mayor's first lady, Sally Kickbush Gare. And we're keeping it light. We're keeping it gospel. Uh, but we're keeping it real. You know, we're talking about real day-to-day -day issues. We're talking about the patience of Job. We're talking about the the walk of Christ that's been put in, in and on her life with um with especially her daughter, dealing with Dravet syndrome. Woo. Did I get it right? You got it right. All right. Give a shout out. What's up? <laughs> um, how long have doctors been aware of Dravet syndrome? Is this something that's just come around the last 17 years because you said that they've diagnosed her? Not until you know? she was 17. Um, okay. I think Dr. Dravet, uh, she worked with either Lennox or Gasto. There's another uh, very catastrophic children's epilepsy called Lennox Gasto sy syndrome. And she worked with one of those doctors. Um, obviously, they're all French. And she found a subgroup of individuals um, marked by onset of seizures before a year of life, a number of other things. Um, and I think she wrote maybe one of her first papers. You know what? I'm not even sure. But I don't think it was until sometime in early, either 98 or the early 2000s, that they renamed what she had deemed severe myoclonic epilepsy of infancy as Dravet syndrome. So Margaret was born in 1990. So when we first got the suggestion that she may have Dravet syndrome in 19. No, 2007, our neurologist hadn't even heard of it. Um, so there's still a, a huge awareness problem for Dervais syndrome. It's, it's very rare, but um, now we're even hearing of older people diagnosed with it. There's a 60-year-old. Um, I'm not sure where she's at, but um, recently been diagnosed. So it's a tough little thing. Um, but yeah, awareness is not great and Iowa is not the best place for pediatric neurologists of any kind of expertise. We doctor her in Chicago with a Dravet expert. So, um, I asked during the break, you know, uh, does your church, uh, your spiritual body have a means to help facilitate spiritual and nurture spiritual growth? Um, for your daughter and other special needs kids? Or do you think that that's something that's lacking, especially in our own community? I think um, I think there are a lot of churches that are really lacking in making um, spiritual growth accessible to people with disabilities. I think one of the problems is there's such a wide variety of disability. You know, somebody like my daughter functioning at a four-year-old level is in the Bible study with some who are functioning at not far off their age level, but intellectually wise, they're not all there. But um, there's a wonderful woman named Cindy Granquist that teaches special ed at Hoover High School, and she runs the Access Bible Study for the young adults at Hope. And she does it all by herself with not any help every Thursday night. And she does a wonderful job. There's what, is, also, what does she do? Uh, music or exercises? No, she has. A, there's a there's a a Bible study magazine put out called Access that she utilizes the lessons in there, and sh they'll read through the lesson together, and then she'll do an activity based on the lesson to reinforce what they've learned from the lesson, and then she'll hand out um, like a verse card at the end. Okay. So they kind of get it oral, you know, auditorially, and then an activity 
and then a little card visually. So, um, and there's a there's a director of special needs at Hope that helps with the children. So, um, they try to accommodate everyone in their Sunday school program. So, um, and they they also include them in their vacation Bible school. So last year, Margaret was able to volunteer at vacation Bible school, and she just loved that. So they try to let him volunteer and do things. Mm-hmm. So if I'm if I'm hearing you correctly, and you can always correct me, you you know me well <laughs> enough that you can shake a stick. Um, there is definitely ministry opportunities out there. There are there few and far between, and and I will say it's just like everything else. Everybody says, "What about Special Olympics?" Well, to me, Special Olympics is another issue that it's great for some people, but it's geared toward the more physically able maybe a little higher functioning person. Um, there's a lot of sitting around time in Special Olympics. There's there's a lot of things they could do better. Um, it, it, it just sometimes I get frustrated. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity for children with special needs anymore. For adults, not so much. Sure. Um, question just popped up here. Um, is, is there anything that sparks more seizures more so than others tv music loud loud sounds lights more so than any others um being overtired uh, overheating um maybe a blood sugar issue if she hasn't eaten well we don't really ever know there's nothing you can do that's preventable i mean of course keeping her out of the heat sure that's a no-brainer um you know, keeping her calm. If, if she de- if she gets too excited and overheated, she'll have a seizure. But at this point, 95% of her seizures are when she's sleeping. Really? Yeah. So there's always someone with her. One of us always sleeps with her because, you know, you don't want her to be face down in a pillow when she's having a seizure. So. My yeah. goodness. I, I, I now see, I've known you quite some time didn't know that Mm -hmm. i learned something new every day um we talked during the the break that um you used to do jazzercise Mm -hmm. and um i said you know what's margaret's uh mobility and did she do exercise with you because i know how she is musically you know is that something that that she can do on a day-to-day basis does she like to do it is it something that brings her joy you know she hasn't done it for years. When I was teaching and learning routines, she would watch the videos. She has some of the older videos memorized, and she really liked it. We probably need to get that back out and see if we can get her off the couch. <laughs> she loves to dance, so that's part of her exercise. The young woman that we hire to help take care of her, we, we'll call it a dance party, and they'll crank up the iPod and get her to dance. She loves to dance. Wow. So we just have to kind of keep it not too crazy. <laughs> But yeah, she loves to dance and sing. Mm-hmm. Um, I know she likes to sing because she, when I'm singing to her, she'll like she'll either pipe in and sing something <laughs> else, or she'll say, "Shut up, right, <laughs> right, be quiet," you know. And it, I just keep singing. <laughs> it, it's a life challenge. It's a lesson I'm just gonna have to learn, I guess, with her. But I love her. Um, in in regards to um, creating ministries, working with people of special needs, I don't like to say disabilities. It's just mm-hmm. something that you know. Um, do you think that this is something that we can really grasp and so that we can start working more towards um, creating and asking God to give us a better understanding? Um, Absolutely. Of- Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I just think if people would realize the loneliness that the people have, you know, they'd want to give it their time a little bit. I just, I remember one night at, at the Bible study at Hope, one of the individuals said, how come nobody wants to play basketball with us? It broke my heart. Really? Mm-hmm. I mean, he was aware. And how come? What's the answer? It can't be because, because because is not an answer. No. Where are you people? What are you doing at 7.30 on the first Thursday night of the month? Okay. You should be at Lutheran Church of Hope. You're all listening and... right now. She's putting out a call. <laughs> That's so right. If next Lutheran, Thursday night. If Lutheran Church of Hope has an influx of attendance next Thursday night, you could say you heard about it on The View. That's right. <laughs> 
<laughs> My guest is Sally uh, Kickbush Gear today in the studio with me, and I tell you, it's a blessing each and every time that we get together. We have we have church in our own silly little sense, but we're talking about <laughs> Dervase today here on the View from the Pew and 99.3 KTIA FM. Uh, we want you to come back after the station break. If you have any questions, please call in. We'd like to hear from you. Otherwise, hit me on Facebook. I'll answer you there as well. Tune in, turn on, turn it up. We'll be right back. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Drink, dance, party. Kitties is the ultimate dance club in Des Moines. A huge dance floor with room to move, three bars to keep your drinks full, and kicking DJs playing all your favorite dance music. At Kitties, we've always got your birthday party planned with Birthday Fridays. That's right, when your birthday rolls around, there's only one place to go. Gather up your friends and head to Kitties, where you drink free on the Friday of your birthday week. Find out more about Birthday Fridays at KittiesUSA.com. Kitties, all kinds of people, all kinds of music, all kinds of fun. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. If you choose to obey the power of sin, it leads to death. If you choose to obey obedience, it leads to righteousness. Forgiveness is just the beginning of life in Christ. God wants us to live for him now. And because of Jesus Christ, the gospel was preached, and you and I are blessed today because of Abraham. Did you know that? We're blessed. Experience Truth, 99.3 FM. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. We've got questions. You've got the answer. Join the conversation. It's your voice we want to hear. So call 855-244-0077. Now, here's J. Michael McCoy. <laughs> She's chuckling. I am not J. Michael McCoy. He <laughs> said one day I was Ryan Seacrest. He said I was Joan Rivers. Who knows? But I am Reich <laughs> Plekis. I don't clap like this or have a face <laughs> like this. But welcome back. And, and those of you that are tuning in on 99.3, you couldn't see what I just demonstrated by hands. But <laughs> welcome back. It is a blessing to be here at The View from the Pew in 99.3 KTIA. You know, um, earlier on in the segment, we uh, mentioned the Richard Smallwood event. Please, please show up on June 14th at Grace United Methodist Church. June 14th, the doors open at 6 p.m. You can get tickets at www eventbrite.com for our evening of corporate worship with none other than Richard Smallwood, a mass choir, orchestra and band, and special guest Earl Bynum in a, an evening of total praise. I tell you there, in that choir, and I'm just going to list it, I don't know all of them, but there's Episcopalians, there's Presbyterians, there's White Baptists, Black Baptists, there's um, Methodists, there's Free Methodists, there's Evangelicals, they're all there. But come out for an evening of total praise and worship with Richard Smallwood at Grace United Methodist on June 14th. You can find us on Facebook. If you can find me, it's Reich, R-E-I-K-E, Plekas, P-L-E-C-A-S. And I'll be glad to send you the information. Or else you can go to eventbrite.com, search Richard Smallwood in Des Moines and get your ticket there. Or you can get tickets at the door as well. And I tell you, it's going to be a blessed evening of just nothing but total worship. And Sally was singing the song as we were coming to the studio today. <laughs> so we were having a good time in the car. During the break, you said. You will never experience more joy than you can experience when you serve with special needs people. When these people play basketball, they give each other the ball. They cheer when somebody makes a basket. There's no teams. There's no competition. They cheer for each other. They cheer for those people that are playing with them. It's just pure joy for an hour. And there's nothing better than the joy of the Lord. That's right. You know, uh, I couldn't think of anything better than a, a non-competitive sport uh -huh. <laughs> where you could go out. Everybody is a winner. 
you know, mm-hmm. what a blessing to partake in something where every everybody's a winner. I, right. I'm just going to rephrase it. Everybody's a winner. Right. There's no score. You know? It's just fun. Some of them, some of them can hardly walk. So you're just going down the court at a slow speed and waiting until they get to the hoop and waiting for them to shoot. Do we take things for granted? Prom after prom, mm. you know. <laughs> yeah, there there's a lot of mourning and a lot of grieving that goes on having a special needs child. Okay. She did not walk for her high school graduation. She took a nap and had a seizure. Wow. She was home. She never went to a dance because they hold dances at 7 or 8 o'clock at night. She's too tired by then. Um, things just don't work out for her time schedule. She'll never get married. She'll never have a date. Never partook in a play or in the marching band. No. 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 You know, I, I think I can think of, like you said, you know, there's nothing like you can experience more joy than volunteering with the special needs children. You've said that there's opportunities like the, the riding stables out at Jester Park. Mm-hmm. And um, I know that there's opportunities with Special Olympics. I know because people have contacted me on that before or Easter Seals. There are background checks that are done in regards to people because of the simple fact that you are working with youth. You're working with people with special needs and they mm-hmm. want to make this sure that you're a special person that can deal with them, you know. Right. But um, I think that you are so true in saying the simple fact that, you know, um, the joy of the Lord is going to come upon you and give you the strength to deal with that person. You know, um, I've probably asked you more questions today than in the past five years, mm-hmm. you know, in regards to um, the relationship that I have with you and have with your daughter. You know, I, I know that I just love her. I, I know that you asked my daughter to come over one time in the, the mascots outfit, the tiger mm. outfit from Valley high school. And I was, I, I didn't want to go. I was petrified. I was like, Oh my Lord, Jesus, this look, a stare the scare the bejeebers out of this child. The kid's going to lock himself in a closet, you know? And I, I just didn't know what to think. So I just didn't even want to go. So <laughs> how'd that go? Oh, well, she loved it. Cause she saw that Valley tiger all the time at school. So okay. she saw it in assembly. She, she thought that was the greatest thing in the world. She just loved that. She had, so much fun. I have the best pictures from that. Did Laura take the costume off and show no, it was her? No, no. She kind of kept it a secret. Yeah. Good. So yeah, it was cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, is is Hope open to people coming in and working with them? Yeah, I mean, I know that they're always on a membership drive. Um, you said Cindy, <laughs> Cindy Grandquist is in charge of working with special needs out there? She's, she, she does the Access Bible Study. Kristen Lance does the children's area. Okay. Um, Kristen Lance is on staff. Cindy Grandquist is a volunteer. Um, so I think anybody who would want to volunteer and really come alongside side by side with Cindy or Kristen would need to talk to them and see what the procedure would be. But anybody who wants to come ask a, play basketball the first Thursday of the month from 7.30 to 8.30 is welcome to come and play basketball. Okay. Types of music. That Margaret likes? Yeah. Oh, golly. She likes it all. Don't say Led Zeppelin because I will freak out. (laughs) No, she likes it all. She likes it all. We took her to Million Dollar Quartet at the Civic Center and we couldn't get her to leave. She she still didn't believe Elvis had left the building. She loves Elvis Presley. She loves uh, Disney. She still loves Barney. Barney was her make-a-wish trip. She, She wanted to meet Barney and Ariel. So she got to do that. Make a wish is a first class operation. And every time I think of that trip, I kind of tear up because it was really amazing and awesome. But any kind of music she loves, she loves Jesus loves me. Uh, She'll sing almost anything. She and her dad are doing a lot of, a lot of rock and roll at night. They're having fun. So yeah. Yeah, it just depends on who introduces her to the song, and if they sing along with her, she kind of she'll get to like it. Is she a daddy's girl? Oh, she's a total daddy's girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves men. She, she's a total. She loves my brother. She loves my dad. She loves her, her brother. Yeah. Wow. Well, I tell you, it's been a blessing to have you in the studio today. I am. I am so glad that I could have a deeper understanding of Dravet syndrome, but yet even a better understanding of the patients that the Lord has put upon you and, and your family, Sally. Um, you've been a blessing to my life in different areas, and you know that. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to get involved, um, I'm sure if you reach out to Sally on, on Facebook, she'll say yes, you know, or she'll hook you up with somebody, definitely. 
uh, she is involved at Lutheran Church of Hope. Um, if you are currently involved with that ministry here in the city, tell them that, hey, you want to get involved. And that, um, you know, she's definitely put out the plea to say today to say, hey, during Thursday nights, there's basketball that these kids would love to have somebody else come alongside them and, you know, find out where God can give you a new ministry. Don't ever say that the box is too small or that the doors are closed because you've heard today right here at The View from the Pew, 99.3 FM, with me, your host, Reich Plekis, that there's definitely yet another opportunity. Maybe it's not music ministry. Maybe it's not dance ministry or my ministry. Maybe it's special needs, reaching out to those that may not be able to be necessarily reached back to us, but be able to bless us in ways that we can't measure. I tell you, it's been a blessing. Sally, do you want to give a shout out to anybody? <laughs> no, you're a blessing in my life too. Oh, thank you. I tell you, the Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. <laughs> and uh, we'll post this so you can show Miss Margaret later on. And the Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you, Margaret. <laughs> I'm probably staying off key, but that's all right. That's what I'm all about. I tell you, if you would like to be a guest of mine on the show, www.theviewfromapew, hit me on Facebook. I'd love to have you as a guest.